everybody! Welcome to the Jaden Stitches Show, and thanks for dropping by! This holiday season, we have five handy tips for you to keep in mind if you plan on giving out homemade gifts this year, especially of the knit or crochet variety. Ready? Let's jump right in! First, we want to make a list and check it twice. Now this should sound kind of obvious, but it's amazing how often we make lists and then forget to look at them, or lose them, or toss them out the window entirely when we get really excited making stuff or shopping. So a gift list will help keep you on track, it will help make sure you don't forget anyone or forget anything. This list should have everybody on it that you want to give something to, and next to their name, what it is you want to make, and or anything you want to buy. So this way you can keep an eye on your spending, make sure that you don't miss anyone, and this list will also play, very important, play a very important role in our schedule. A schedule. Uh, this might be new to some of you who don't bother scheduling things, but if you're going to make a gift list and you've got a lot of people you want to make and or buy for, then it's probably a good idea that you have time allotted for the crafting and the buying. So grab your calendar and make sure that all the other things you have to do this time of year are on that as well. We're really busy uh, at this time of the year. We have a lot more shopping and a lot more events and a lot more people to see. So make sure all of that is on your schedule before you sit down with your gift list. Then take your list and make a realistic estimation of how long each item on that gift list is going to take you to make. And when you are figuring that out, consider the following. 1. Planning out the project. 2. Getting all the materials together. So do you have them on hand? Do you have to shop for them? Are you ordering them online? How long is that going to take to get here? 3. Actually making the gift itself. 4. Washing, blocking, and drying time. 5. Wrapping it up. And possibly six, if you're not going to see these people in person to give these gifts and you're shipping them through the mail, how long is that going to take? How long does it take to get through the mail? And what's the last possible date that you can put something in the mail to make sure it arrives on time? Consider all six of those things when you're making that realistic estimation of time required for each of those things on your list. Then, when you've figured out how much time that's going to take, Look at your schedule and start slotting in the work time. If you planned on making a blanket for everybody on your list and it turns out that making one of these blankets is going to take you several hours per day per week just to make one, you might want to rethink your generosity. <laughs> so make sure you have your schedule handy and that realistic time frame so that you can back up and make sure that you don't miss anyone or forget anything or feel rushed. This is also supposed to be a lot of fun. And one more thing, if you're seeing people before another group of people for gift giving, you got to make those people's gifts first. So this is why it's a really good thing to have a schedule with all of those dates and events on it. All right, you're ready to start putting together all of your materials. Before you launch out of the house with your gift list in hand, check your stash first. We spend a lot of extra money this time of year. We spend it on gift buying and food preparation and outings. So anywhere you can save a bit of money right now is a great thing. So get all of your crafting supplies together. And if you're the kind of person who doesn't keep it all in one place, go through the house with a fine tooth comb and make sure you've got everything. Then compare what you have to what you need in order to make everything on your gift list. Chances are you've already got some things aside that you don't need to go and buy a second time. You may even have forgotten that you did have some of your supplies. This will help save you money and give you a better idea of what you do need to go shopping for when you head out. Now that you know what you have, it's a good idea to make a list of everything you need. This way, when you go to the craft store, you'll have a list and you won't accidentally overbuy or get overwhelmed like I tend to. <laughs> also, if you have say four balls of a beautiful forest green yarn that you're planning on using and you need one more, here's a really important thing to keep in mind. You want to take a label of that yarn that you already have or make a note with all the important label information on it including manufacturer, brand, fiber content, size of yarn, color including whether it has a name or a dye lot, 
and all of that pertinent information that belongs on a label. So if you can't just take the label, write it all down, and a swatch of the yarn itself. Stick it to the label or your note and take that with you when you go to the store. If you can pair up the exact same yarn, great. If there's been a slight change in the dye lot because your yarn is older, then you might want to look around to see if you can find something else that matches it closely. Also keep in mind that sometimes manufacturers change the name or the dye lot ever so slightly on a product just to kind of keep it fresh looking. And since our yarn can look very differently at home versus in the store versus on our computer screens, it's handy to have that color and that information in front of you when you're matching it up to other yarns or possibly combining it with other colors for a project you have in mind. You want to have a color and your label information with you and this will help save you a lot of time and possibly agony down the road. And the last tip I have for you is making sure you have a place to hide. Not yourself, I know sometimes we want to do that at this time of year, but I mean the things you're making. So if you're making things for people who live with you or who visit frequently, then you want to have a place to hide it. You can't necessarily just ball up a blanket you're working on, stuff it into a bag and stuff it under the couch. So it's recommended that you have a predetermined spot to hide the gifts you've already made and the gifts that you're working on just to keep them out of the prying eyes of those who shouldn't see them. So if you have space, a big Rubbermaid container with a tight fitting lid is great. You can stuff it into the closet or into the basement or up in the attic. Put a label on it that's really boring and not too curiosity arising like old books, hats and scarves, Halloween decorations, something like that that you know what it is but no one else is going to open it up. And another thing, if you can't get a bin, make sure that your hiding place is at least out of reach for little people, pets, you're not necessarily going to have it exposed to kitchen smells or dusty, musty smells, and it won't get wet. In short, you don't want anything to ruin all of your hard work, so have a really safe, clean, well-hidden hiding place. <laughs> So those are our five handy tips for gift creating this holiday season. If you'd like some more tips and tricks, we'll put a link to our tips and tricks playlist over here. And be sure to check out our website. We'll put the link in the description box down below. Our website has lots of free patterns, some really neat tools, some tips and tricks. We even have a shop page where you can go and purchase things online that you see us using here on the show regularly. Some products, some tools, neat stuff like that. So be sure to check out our website when you're working on your gift list this year. And that's it. We'll see you really, really soon here on the Jade and Stitches show. In fact, we will see you Friday for a tutorial. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, and have an awesome week, everybody. Bye.